Hey everyone, welcome back to 25 Sweepies and welcome back to my Christmas series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw this really cute Christmas wreath and if you may have been here yesterday as well, you will see that we are going to be using some skills that we learned yesterday from the bow tutorial. So let's get going. So I've got my 3000 by 3000 canvas ready to go. The DPI is set to 300 and I am going to go change the background color. I am changing it to a pink shade today. I want to go with a very light pink, but of course you guys can do whatever. Just think about what colors you may or may not want to use on your wreath. Um, once I've got that done, we're actually going to start right in with this illustration. We're not going to worry about a sketch. We're going to go and utilize basically the sketch. So I'm going to grab a green color. I've got my um, 6B pencil selected, but wait. We need to turn on the grid guides. So we're gonna go to the wrench. We're gonna turn on drawing guide and turn the grid all the way up. So we got that big plus sign. And now we are officially ready to go. So I'm going to make sure I have the correct pencil selected because I don't at the moment. I'm gonna go grab my 6B pencil. And of course you guys can use whatever brush that you would like, but I am using the 6B pencil. That way it's easily accessible to everybody. And I'm gonna draw a circle and make it, you know, semi big. We do want room for a bow on top of this. So just, you know, make your circle however you want. Center it within the middle of your canvas. Um, if you need, you can turn on the snapping guides to make sure it's centered perfectly. And then we're gonna do something interesting here or maybe you've already thought of it. We are going to duplicate this layer and then kind of create the inside of the wreath. And this is all gonna be part of like a guide. So while this kind of looks like a sketch, it's not really a sketch because we're going to have it in our final piece anyway. So I'm just like downsizing the circle that I duplicated and I'm checking the thickness of how thick I want my wreath to be. I think I want it to be a little chunkier than that. So that's probably good. So now we've got these two perfect circles together and I'm gonna go ahead and merge them all into one layer. And this is the layer where we are going to fill in the greenery part of our wreath. So I am using um, the 6B pencil like I mentioned earlier and I am just kind of like doing a curly cute, curly swirly motion and I'm just gonna fill in this area. If I go over the lines, that's actually perfect because it gives a bit more of like a realistic texture for when you think about a wreath and like the texture of the pines and everything. Also, something really fun to do with this piece is to use a super textured brush so you get some like color variations. Like personally, if I, with this series, I tried to use ones that were available to everybody, but I do have this brush set that I own from Lisa Bardot. It's her pencil kit or like pencil box or something like that where she has a pencil in there called the smooth pencil and it has such a nice texture and whenever you were to be making these sorts of motions you'd be able to see that texture and it would be a great like instant way to get some nice texture in this but i wanted to use stuff that you guys would have access to without having purchased any add-ons so that's why i'm using the 6b pencil and um I'm just gonna fill this in with one shade of green and then we're actually gonna go over it with two other shades of green. But whenever I do that, I'm actually gonna make my green shade a little bit different. So I've done that now and whenever I go over the edge, I'm gonna kind of like use the side of my pencil more so, so I get a more of a charcoal-y like texture. But I'm going to continue these motions for the whole wreath and then I'm also gonna add one more shade darker on top to really just give this wreath some depth.
Okay, we've got that done. We're gonna add a new layer on top of the wreath and we are gonna start illustrating our bow. So if you guys missed yesterday's video, you might wanna go check it out because I actually showed you exactly all the steps that I use for making a bow and we went into details and kind of like utilizing, utilizing tools within Procreate. But right now we're gonna kind of have the quick little version here. So I'm gonna start with like this um, elongated rectangle that has curved edges. It's kind of like an oval, but not quite. And then once I've got that shape all sorted out and I like, and of course you guys can do whatever sort of bow that you like, or you can even skip the bow on the wreath if you want it. Then I'm gonna add another layer and I'm gonna put it below the one that we just did that shape on. I'm gonna turn on the um, symmetry tool within the grid guide. And I am now going to add the sides of the bow. So whatever I do on one side goes to the other instantly, which is super nice. Makes this part super easy. Um, just work on the scale that you like that matches your wreath. And then I'm going to color in the first, like the front half of the bow. Okay, now that I've got that done, I'm gonna go add a, another layer and I'm gonna put it underneath the one we were just working on. And I'm going to deepen the color that I'm working with by turning down the brightness and turning up the saturation. And now I'm gonna fill in the back panel of the top part of the bow. Cause this would be like the inside of the ribbon and it might have a contrasting texture or look, appearance. And now I am going to actually go back to the color that I was previously using. So you can either select that by like holding down your finger on top and selecting that color, or you can go to your color history if your iPad has that. And now I'm just gonna go and start illustrating the little, the ends to the ribbon. I never know what you call this part, as you guys could see yesterday in that video, I kept like changing what I called it because I don't know. It's kind of like the ties, but I, I don't know. But I'm gonna fill that in on this layer. And I know it doesn't look like it has much definition at the moment, but I promise you, we will get there and it will look better. Now I'm gonna add another layer, and again, I'm gonna put it below the one we were just working on. So basically I'm working backwards, and I'm gonna try to create a, another tie on the other side that looks similar. It may take a few tries, but don't be discouraged. Keep going. Okay. Now that I've got that part done, I'm gonna fill that in as well. And then it's gonna be time to get on to adding some shadows here and making this bow look a little more, less boring, I guess you could say. So now I am going to turn an alpha lock on that layer, add a new layer on top, turn that layer to a multiply blend mode and turn it onto a clipping mask so it only adhere, like only goes on the one we were just working on. And I'm gonna add some shadowings. If you guys want a more in-depth look at how this is done, be sure to check out yesterday's video. But I'm gonna repeat this step for each of the parts of the bow that we just did. And I'm just gonna be adding shadows. So I'm gonna go in with the color, color it in, and then I'm going to smudge it out to give it a nice, more um, smooth transition, I guess you could say. That already looks so much better. And again, I'm gonna do this on the next part as well. So by the time that you're done with the bow, you're gonna have lots of layers that make up the bow, but it's totally worth it. And it totally makes it in my opinion. Okay, now that we've got that done, I'm gonna go back to my layer panel. I'm gonna select all of those bow layers and I'm putting them into a big old group called a bow so that way our layer panel doesn't look super messy. And now it is time to start decorating. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer. And actually before we get to the decorating, I wanna go and put some shadows in behind the bow on the greenery to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I've added a layer, I've turned that layer onto multiply blend mode and I have selected the 
shade of green that I used for the wreath and now I'm just enhancing the parts behind the bow and smudging them out so that way it looks a little bit more like it's actually on the wreath. Now I'm gonna add a new layer. Oh, first, actually, let's name that. I'm gonna name that shadow so that way I know where to find the shadow parts because we're gonna be adding some ornaments and we're gonna want some shadows behind those as well later on. So I've now added a new layer and I'm gonna select the colors that I want to use for my ornaments. And I'm gonna name this layer ornaments. And I'm going to start illustrating them now. Um, I've decided to go with a turquoise shade. And for this, I'm just doing very imperfect circles. I'm gonna scatter them throughout. And of course you guys can use whatever color combination you want and do how many ever bubbles you want as well. But I'm gonna go kind of from like a pinkish red to a turquoise to like a pink. And I'm just going to repeat this step until I have the wreath as full as I so desire. And all of these ornaments at this point are still on the same layer. Okay, I think after this color, we're gonna be done because we got a full looking wreath. So now that I have that done, I'm gonna turn an alpha lock on on this layer. You can either swipe it with two fingers or you can tap it and turn on alpha lock. And now what I'm gonna do is basically darken the sides of the bobbles. So I will select the color that they are, then I will go turn down the, um, here, I'll show you real quick. See, I'm gonna turn down the brightness and turn up the saturation, and then I'm just gonna color the side of the bobble. I'm gonna repeat that step for all of the colors. So select, turn down the brightness, turn up the saturation. This is a great thing to do whenever you want to do like a shading for a specific color, but without like going to the color picker. And then I'm going to go grab the smudging brush and kind of fade those little lines in. And while from afar it may not look like it's doing much, but it's adding a lot of definition to these bobbles and making them look a little bit more round. I'm gonna add a, another layer on top. I'm gonna select the color white and I'm gonna give all these little things a little shine line. This little shine line literally makes all the difference on things. Okay, now that I've got that part done, I'm liking how it looks. And I'm gonna go ahead and merge those layers together. So we have the ornaments on a layer, but now it's time to move back to that layer that we called shadows. I'm gonna select the green color from the wreath and I'm gonna do like I did behind the bow and scribble some of the darker green behind each of the ornaments. And then I'm going to smudge it out with the smudging tool. And again, it makes it look like it's actually on the wreath, gives a little bit more definition and texture within the wreath as well. And all around, it just adds a ton. I forgot that one, so let's fix that. And um, yeah, you can just do this so you are happy with them. Next up, I think we are gonna add some festive Christmas lights. So go back up to your ornaments layer, then press the add button so we have a new layer above the ornaments and we're gonna call this layer lights if you want to name them. And now you want to go and um, we need to change the color. So go pick like a yellowy shade or whatever color you want your Christmas lights to be. I want it to be like a buttery yellow. And then go grab your brush go to your brush library and press the luminance group and then do the light pin. And for this, you can either like just dot on the lights or if you want lights that are a bit more powerful, um, you can actually like doodle them in like a full like little circle. So I did the dotting texture there, but I think I like it better when I actually go in and like draw in the circle because you get a bit more of a glow there. So at this point, you just wanna do this all over your wreath and it creates like an instant glow for you. You don't have to go and use a bloom or anything like that. You can just create your own little light, so place them wherever you like. And for like a very over the, over the top step, 
if you would like, tomorrow I'm going to be showing you how to make these sort of twinkle. So be sure to come back tomorrow for part two of this video where we make the Christmas lights twinkle because, well, why not? And also, if you guys are participating on Instagram for any of these things, if you go there, you can actually search for like the 12 days of Christmas hashtag and you can find a gift that looks just like this wreath. So be sure to check that out. But before we go, I am going to go ahead and add that normal texture that I've been adding on all of these pieces. So I've added a new layer, turned on the multiply blend mode, and I've gotten the Gladys Things brush that I've been using for texture. Turn it down just a little bit. And now we've got our final piece. We've got a fun little Christmas wreath. And as I mentioned earlier, be sure to come back tomorrow so you guys can see this animation version. So thanks again for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys in tomorrow's video where we are animating these little Christmas lights. Bye!